Without uh, any further delay, I'm going to call back on Ron Smithfield for the introduction to our guest speaker today. Ron. Uh, Jim told me a while ago he was going to wing his presentation. I told him I'm going to wing our, my presentation. Actually, we have a little thing before I introduce you, Ted. We're going to talk about our new face of the Valley book. And I have a listing of the people that are on the committee and have uh, done a great job. I mentioned them uh, going to the, you know, we're waiting for our button uh, pusher to come forward. Mark Hackett does a lot of good things for this club. I hope you'll appreciate it, especially when I have a PowerPoint. He makes things happen. Uh, we have the uh, committee of people that work on this project. Ted, I don't know if you can see the screen over there, but these are all the different people that worked on it. Um, there are lots of different people that have included Phil Gray up there. I will say something about, uh, um, anyway, all of these people have made a great contribution. Let's go on. Well, I have a whole list of donors. I tell you what, in the interest of time, I'm going to read a couple of them here. Um, Austin B. History and Philosophy Department, uh, Dr. Tim Duffin, Bill Hoy, of course, the Columbus Club, the Foundation, the Marine Corps League, the Historical Society, uh, David, Nancy Smithfield, Ron and Carolyn, Keith Swift, Tennessee Arts and Heritage Council, uh, Jerry Gilman applied for a grant from them and got $500. Jim and Coral Thomas, the 101st Airborne Association, Dr. Frank Willard and his wife, and Eleanor Williams. So those are the donors that we have listed. There could have been others that I don't have. Go on. <clears throat> this all started in February. We had a meeting of advertising the paper. Phil did a good job of advertising to get veterans to bring in their pictures or family members and so forth. We, they had a great group, over 100 people brought in pictures that day, and uh, that was very important. So everything was digital photography. <clears throat> Just going through those pictures, and uh, we'll get going on the next part of it. It was a lot of work, and they did a great job. This is the front and the back uh, pages of our Face of the Valor 2 booklet, and uh, it has pictures of eight different veterans selected by the committee, and the famous picture at the back of the 101st with three Apache helicopters in the background over the courthouse is the famous picture by Larry Safko. Just to give you a tip of some of the 387 veterans, local veterans that are listed, uh, I know you all knew President Harville at Austin P, but did you know that he served in World War I and World War II? We got something about him. Go ahead. Archie Wood, you've heard that name. He was killed in World War I, and the American Legion post was named for him and Frank Atkins later. Uh, this man was killed in uh, Operation Torch or in that era, and they named a battleship for him, destroyer. I guess you all know the guy on the left, but the guy on the right is Frank Sutton from Clarksville, who was in World War II. Fourteen Atlantic is very big. Most of the old members remember Tom Mulvey, who was uh, in World War II. I wish I'd known all about this when, I, uh, when he was here in the club, but he was a great guy. Uh, Jim Reese, you probably know Jim Reese, but did you know that he was an aide to General Pack? He was in the Sicily invasion. This has special meaning to me, uh, Forrest Wooten. When I was a little boy, I used to hear stories about the Pearl Harbor in his, in his uh, uh, living room. So it was the reason I got interested mostly in, in World War II history, listening to those stories. Uh, Woodrow Wilson Baden, uh, he was killed in uh, Vietnam. You all know John? and uh, he was he was in World War II. You all know Jack Frost, or at least the old guys do, former president of this club and uh, a pilot in uh, World War II. 
Gary Clark, more recent. That's uh, he was a fighter pilot. Jim Thomas is on our committee, not here today, but uh, he was in Vietnam. Now, this booklet is dedicated to some special American patriots. And I want to tell you a little bit about them. I wish I could tell you everything about them, but it would be exhausting. So let's go on. Bob Jones was an incredible man. He was on our committee, one of our early uh, members, and uh, kind of quiet, but when he spoke, everybody listened. One of the things I could tell about him, uh, when we were working on our Face of the Valor one, we were a little bit short of funds. He wrote a check for $1,000, which is a lot of money, and anonymous. I said, would you let me put your name in the book? No, wouldn't do it. <clears throat> but anyway, he was a fantastic man. When he passed away, this man right here wrote his obituary. It was the longest obituary, I think, in the history of the Indian product. <laughs> it was an incredible story. Go ahead. Just a few of the things. He was not, I was over in World War II in the Pacific, uh, and also in Battlefield Korea. He was at Chosun Reservoir. He walked out 185 men. It was a terrible battle. Uh, Vietnam, Distinguished Service Cross, second highest honor, Silver Star. You can read all those. Uh, Incredible individual and hero, and stayed active in the community in a lot of different ways. Um, so we appreciate his service. Second, go ahead. Art Lombardi, World War II, Korea, Vietnam. Everybody that knows you <coughs> was the godfather. He was the guy he was. Go ahead. I'm not going to read all that, but uh, he was. He did get a battlefield commission uh, in 1945 in Lusanne, Philippines. That's that's a pretty rare thing to happen. And, uh, so he was in the Korean War pretty early. In a, I've heard the story once before. I know that Ted can tell the details, but uh, they were surrounded by North Vietnamese, high, excuse me, North Koreans, and he almost lost his life at that point. But, uh, Luckily, he uh, survived that, got out. It was a close call. Uh, also in Vietnam, he was uh, deputy uh, advisor to the Vietnamese uh, Airborne. And he was on General Westmoreland's staff. That's, that tells you a lot about him right there. He held commands all over. He was well known in the military. He and Ted's uh, paths crossed several different times. Of course, he got back to Clarksville with great friends. Um, <coughs> go on to the next one. And the third person is Ted Crozier. <laughs> you don't know about this, Ted, but and that, down at the bottom there, it should say World War II, Korea, Vietnam. Um, he didn't exactly get into combat, but he was scheduled to go and he was uh, he was just telling me that he was doing counseling because he had a little college. But Ted had a very distinguished career. I'm sure he probably would have been involved in the, in the invasion of Japan, which was scheduled for November 1st, 1945. And uh, there was a second invasion scheduled for January 1945, 46, if the first one didn't didn't succeed. So, uh, he was in the 11th Air War. He established or helped establish the Pathfinders. <clears throat> you know anything about the Pathfinders? They're the, the toughest of the toughest. They go in first to light the uh, drop zone for the air troop. And of course, at Fort Campbell, as Colonel and Chief of Staff, which is like running a small city, which came in handy later, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, many different awards there, Master of Parishes and uh, Legion of Merit, uh, Distinguished Flying Cross with two, so you got basically 
three of those. So, um, 30 years of active duty. Every one of these guys had between 30 and 35 years, which is pretty amazing. Um, he served as, the, the next thing is he served as mayor from 1978 to uh, 86, maybe 87. Go ahead, next slide. This is a picture out of the paper, excuse the quality, but when they first came back to town, Major Crozier and his family, two of which are sitting over here. I'll give you the whole slideshow if you want. Uh, anyway, they, they came back to town. He had no interest in politics when he retired, but I'm told that uh, he got support from veterans and other members of the community. Go ahead to uh, think about money for mayor. Now, he probably would, could add many, many items to this list, top 10 list. Ed, do you want to you see that or not? Uh, he said, they thought he was going to have the city council marching around the you know, city hall, but they didn't do that. But he did organize things and set goals. And of course, we all know Ted is a visionary, he was able to present a vision, it took a little while, but to the community and got things done, like widening 41A, paving the streets. There were many streets that would be problems that weren't even paved, that had curbs, cleaned up the place, and it looked better. Um, I think that uh, gradually people started believing that Clarksville could improve. There was a pretty negative viewpoint those have been around for a while know what I'm talking about. That we, you know, we were, we were like we were and we're going to change. But he is a change agent, there's no doubt about it. He brought ideas from other communities, <laughs> other places they live. One of them, of course, the Oktoberfest from Germany, the River Walk uh, from San Antonio. The, uh, you, if you drove around along Riverside Drive, he was the first mayor. You could not see the river from Riverside Drive. There was the trees were growing up. Think about that. Now it's one of our private employees. Um, the Smith Train Convention. That's in the news now, but it would have been destroyed or just dilapidated and fallen down if Ted hadn't got the city to buy that. Um, the river walk, I mentioned that. And, uh, and one of the big things was getting more retirees to settle here in Clarkston, and some of you are here. It's 1.7 payroll of Fort Campbell, 1.4 retirees, a huge amount. And of course, I had something a little bit to do with this. It got, actually got him to lose the election that was annexation of <laughs> But he did something, and just think about it, if Clarksville ended at the Red River, we'd be a totally different place right now than what we are. So even those people that were vehemently opposed to annexation at the time, I think would have to say that that was a great move for kids. Those are, that's my top 10 list, and Ted, I'm sure, would have others and other people, but uh, I appreciate Phil Gray's wonderful article about Ted. He interviewed him back, uh, back in July, and wrote a wonderful article about him, and I thought it was excellent. Let's see what else we got here. Okay, Wendell Gilbert said to tell Ted the army hadn't been the same since you left. I don't know if that's going to be Okay, Jack Turner would have been here today, but he's uh, at the AUSA meeting in uh, Washington. He said to tell you that General Petraeus said to thanks Ted for all you've done for me and my country. Ted introduced General Petraeus last year. That's all. And uh, did a wonderful job. So Ted knows everybody in the country, I think. But uh, we have somebody that's going to say a few words about you. Well, we're going to get through. <coughs> yeah. For those of you that don't know me, and I had uh, the opportunity to meet you, I'm Tom Crozier. And uh, Ron called me last week and told me the sequence of the events for today, and I jumped at the opportunity to come down and, and be with you. I appreciate the invite, and uh, Ron said, would you mind providing a few comments? And 
I said, oh, most certainly, but I, I need you to know that I'm not the big talker in the family. I don't get up and extemporaneously and, and speak like some of the others, and my sister Corey being one, I think she would have to fall into that category as well as my brother Ted. Uh, but both of them take a back seat to my dad as far as, as that goes. Um, I'll keep it short. Uh, I had planned on yielding the remaining minutes of my time to my dad, because normally he needs all those minutes he can give when he gets up here. But dad, I think that's cut off now. Um, most of you know and have viewed my dad based off of your interactions for a number of years. And I just wanted to provide a couple of comments uh, from being on the inside of things. And first, I'd like to say that there's no better way to honor him today uh, than to include him with two individuals that he has the greatest respect for. Those uh, are two of his closest friends, Colonel R. Lombardi and Colonel Bob Jones. Um, over the years, I've had an opportunity to watch Dad in a number of different settings and environments. And I always took away one common theme out of each one of those. He continually, whether it was on active duty, whether it was as mayor of Clarksville, or whether it's today, not totally retired, but he continually pushes the positive attributes of our military and the men and women that serve our country. Um, I've always heard about people that absorb themselves in, in their job and in work, and I can honestly say that uh, I don't know of anybody that has been more dedicated to the military um, on a daily basis as my dad. He, he certainly has set the example in that area. And it's hard in my mind to distinguish between the passion and love that he has for the military, and specifically the 101st, um, and that which he has for the city of Clarksville and Montgomery County. Montgomery County. They, they coincide with one, one another. I think he's a tremendous ambassador for this whole area. I think that's, that's one reason why he still remains so active out of Fort Campbell as well as in, on, in the local community here. And I'd just like to say to all of you all at the Qantas Club, uh, thank you uh, for honoring these three dedicated soldiers today. And more on a personal note, if I can, uh, after 10 months of battling some esophageal cancer, I, I'm on the back side of things now. But I can honestly say that over those past 10 months, I received a call from Dad every day at 6 p.m. And that is plus or minus 30 seconds. You know, <laughs> being the aviator he is, I, I held him to that standard. Uh, but I wanted to thank him for providing uh, uplifting and encouraging words during that time frame. Uh, and lastly, I can speak for the entire family when I say this, even the older brother who's probably dancing his way to the 10th tee right now down in Fort Lauderdale. But I can say that, uh, Dad, uh, we're all proud of you and we love you. Thank you.
that I truly love on a daily basis. But my daughter told me, Dad, one o'clock is one o'clock, and that means everyone has to leave, according to Mark Brassus, so sit down. <laughs> so you see, I take orders quite well, hopefully. Uh, my concern, if I may just take a few minutes here, my concern is what you just saw in the pictures up there. Bob Jones, Art Lombardi, we were the 101 Mafia, according to uh, Dave Petraeus. But I'm also concerned here with what is going to happen in the future when we, some of us, depart this world. I'd hate to see things start all over again, as it was with, with Bob Jones and Art Lombardi. Incidentally, Art Lombardi used to say that the unit he went into Korea with, Task Force Smith, was the worst trained unit that he'd ever seen, didn't have the organization properly tasked and trained, didn't have the ammunition, and it was really, really bad. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't need to get back into that. The unit that we see out here at Fort Campbell, and I say that for all of the units that we have in our armed forces, is the best trained unit I've ever seen. But I bet that I could challenge everyone here to tell me about the organization of that division. Specifically, this, it's the most powerful division in the world. It's the largest division in the world. It's the most potent division in the world. It's an air assault division. 30 some thousand total, that's the division and the rest of the English at Fort Campbell. But it has two aviation brigades. The only division in the world with two aviation brigades. And they are good. But in addition to that, we have the 160th Special Ops. They are the best you can find anywhere. And of course, they, the division keeps speeding them with, uh, with <coughs> outstanding aviators from the, from the division. My point here is everyone in the Army today wants to have aviation. And I'm talking about the lift capacity, I'm talking about the gunship capacity, because it's so meaningful and so quick. Things that occurred in, in, uh, in Korea, as an example. We, could have, we would have loved to have had aviation. We did, but it was just medevac, little, little <coughs> light helicopters. Um, my point here for the Kiwanis, we need your help in the community. We need you to understand the organization of the division. We need you to support, and, and Ron mentioned it a minute ago, there's Jack Turner and all of the VIP in the, in the area in Fort Campbell in Washington, D.C. for the convention of the Association of the United States Army. about my daughter. Because <laughs> I don't want to get in your bad graces, Don. But my point that I'm making here is we need to know how this is organized at Fort Campbell from the standpoint that we can go to our U.S. representatives, of which we have nine in the state of Tennessee, and, uh, and hopefully we'll have all nine of these to be corporate members of the Association of the United States Army. Going back to 1975, Art Lombardi, bless them, we would go to a 7 o'clock meeting every morning at Fort Campbell with the general staff and the, uh, or the command group. And this one time we said, we don't look very good, uh, General, in Washington, D.C. What do you mean by that? 
Well, we only have 26 corporate AUSA members of the Association of the United States Army, and that doesn't make us look very good. Art and I have both been in the 82nd Airborne Division, and we knew that they won every year. So that became our challenge. Let's beat the 82nd in Fort Bragg, Fort Bragg being a two-division post, of which we did. We went from 26 corporate members to 573, and we beat everyone in the United States, all over the world with that, with that number. Having said that, we have gone downhill since that time. Today we have 286 corporate members. My point in mentioning this is that doesn't make us look very good. And who's ahead and what's the secret? Huntsville, each year, either wins it or it comes to be the second place, and the other is Central Texas, and that's Fort Hood area. So I'm basically saying we need to get our corporate AUSA membership up. Now, Ron touched on the retirees that we have in the area. And what this was, and, and also the reason why we worked on retirees was that we had a poor economic time in 1979, AD 81, 82, uh, with the interest rates that we had, the inflation rates that we had, the unemployment rates that we had. So I was looking for things, and that's when I grabbed on this thing about let's make Clarksville a place to that we can bring in retirees from, from our educational institutions from the, at Fort Campbell. But the number from Fort Campbell is unbelievable. Let me get one, one example of, uh, of, of this, and that's uh, Mac Eddington. Here's Mac Eddington with the, the uh, dental area that he has out there with six retirees in, in that uh, organization. So they're all up, all retired. And I, I'm, I'm assuming that maybe they're on Social Security. That, uh, but here, here's Linda, this setting did with a great eating establishment in St. Bethlehem. And uh, then we have one son who has a furniture store, and we have another son who runs a pinnacle. That's pretty good for one, one family. But we have others that are in our area that make a big, big, big difference. And that, I think that is so, so important. My point, again, to stay on this the corporate membership is the person who is in charge is in Washington, D.C., and that's uh, Hoffman, Bob Hoffman, excuse me. And the person who is in charge of Tennessee is Karen Stanley. Karen Stanley is the executive secretary to the, to the commander at Fort Campbell. Why do I mention this? Why do I feel the importance of this? Because when we won, Fort Campbell won, with 573 corporate members, the chief of staff of the Army threw in, threw in here and awarded the city of Clarksville, uh, uh, stating that this is the best military community in support of the military installation in the world. And as a consequence, to show you that this didn't have anything to do with the, with the White House or our legislators, the Chief of Staff of the Army moved the 5th Special Forces Group from Fort Bragg, North Carolina, to Clarksville and, and Fort Campbell. It, since they have increased two battalions so this is really meaningful to the economy. Now, I have read in the paper where Hemlock, uh, uh, when they, they have full employment of 500, will put into the economy uh, $50 million a year in pay. Well, I said, that is absolutely outstanding, and I'm all for Hemlock. I think that's great. But, when you consider what the 3% pay raise was for the retirees at the active duty at Fort Campbell, make a guess on what that was worth. 
don't guess, $90 million. So you can see that if we build on this, it's going to really be meaningful. However, just like the Chief of Staff of the Army turned around and picked the 5th Special Forces up from Fort Bragg and moved them over here, those two aviation brigades that I mentioned makes us vulnerable under the BRAC situation, which means that the Congress has nothing to say about the decision of the BRAC committee. Once they make the decision, Congress either accepts it or turns it the whole thing down. Well, the importance again, AUSA, I bet we have uh, 150 attorneys in, in Clarksville, judged up pretty, pretty close, pretty close to it. And uh, corporate membership, $150 has two representatives. My point in mentioning this to the Kiwani is that you need to be involved at Fort Campbell with the people at Fort Campbell, with the aviation people at Fort Campbell, and help people retire here. Good the Lord knows the number of great people we have. And Wayne, congratulations on that, that barbecue win. That, that's outstanding. See, these things really, really happen in great, great fashion. Kari, I have four more wins. <laughs> Three wins, <laughs> seven. <laughs> Correction. <laughs> My point, and I'm, I'll sit down, is that you get an awful lot out of this, but it's primarily what, what you put in. Now, we have some people here that I could, that I could name that have been involved with it. Association of the United States Army for years and years and years. And I, I don't know how many people I know that my son-in-law, Mark Grasses, has been to the convention in Washington, D.C. And, and Ron's great, great outfit down here, uh, he, he really needs to go because he can see everything that's on display and he has also had a number of, of work orders for the people at Fort Campbell and could get more throughout the convention with all of the uh, displays that, that exist in Washington, D.C. Plus the other part of this is the Quad A, that's the Army Aviation Association of America. They meet every year in Opryland where there are 200 president CEOs of com companies aviation-related companies that, that are there. And uh, General Smith will be working with, with a number of us at Fort Campbell will try to help this. But bless all of you. I love you all. And I <coughs> love being down here. I expect about 150 corporate members out of this group. And, and Mark, President thank you for yours. Ted, if you got one of the forms, we've already got a volunteer here. Our president said to sign us up. Okay. Ted, we have one more little presentation for you. Okay. This is a special a lifelong service to our country, state, and city. We want to start the partial October 11, 2001. 101st of Lockheed. It's got your service. It's got our party oh. service. And oh, Bob. Bob Jones. Oh, bless you. Thank you. Thank you.
We need them to be corporate members also. <laughs> <laughs> That speech, what I'd like to do is uh, we've had two weeks of carryover money for the pot money. And if we could, before we bust up, if y'all would like to make uh, a donation to the pot money, I'd like to sign our club up as a corporate sponsor today for this program. And then use the pot money over the last two weeks to fund that. Commanding General in Washington, but as soon as I get home. Okay. Tell me you got a corporate bank. Carol, thank you so much. Uh, Ron, thank you. And uh, to the members of the uh, committee, thank you all so much for your hard work. If there's no other questions or, or comments from anybody, we stand adjourned. Thank you. Oh, yeah.